Hello, everybody. Uh, I want to say thank, uh, thanks for uh, Brunel University because it uh, provides me uh, this opportunity to continue my master or uh, to get my master degree uh, in disease mechanism and therapeutics. And also, I want to thank my fellowship, Cara, which uh, provides an uh, opportunity to bring as uh, an academic student to continue as a study due to the war uh, in his country uh, or her country. So I'm uh, so thankful to, uh, um, to Brunel and Cara. And also, I'm very thankful to uh, my all of my tutors, uh, starting with Dr. Bagnarelli, uh, who guided me uh, during all my master uh, trip and until the dissertation step. And I want to uh, I really appreciate and thank uh, uh, Dr. Golden Simbach because she uh, guided me uh, in my dissertation from the first step to the final step. Uh, I want to represent uh, my thankful to her because I guess like, like I was a uh, kid and she hold my hand at every step, uh, do that, do this, and she did, teach me how to do, uh, to think practically and to identify problems and solve them. Solve I want to say thank you for all my supervisors, Dr. Gordon in lab and safety, and uh, Dr. Drainus in, uh, uh, in bioinformatics, and uh, uh, cell signaling with all my tutors, uh, starting with Dr. Thanos, and uh, I'm very thankful to you all. Uh, today, I will present my presentation. Uh, uh, it's um, matricellular protein, protein and their rule, uh, in, uh, rule and uh, the crosstalk between tumor and host cell. Uh, there is a uh, an increase in uh, there has been increase in uh, uh, in studies or research about the involvement of matricellular protein in cancer, and this um, and there is uh, many publication about uh, the role of matricellular protein in the uh, formation of the tumor uh, microenvironments, which consist of tumor cells, extracellular matrix, micro vessels, and also immune uh, uh, cells. And uh, we know that extracellular matrix is a, stru a structural scaffold that uh, helps to form the uh, tumor uh, microenvironment because it is a background that helps the uh, cells to stuck on it uh, uh, through binding with integrin. And also it, uh, it, uh, uh, it's formed as a layer that separates functional cell from the surrounding stroma cell. And also it consists of supporting uh, proteins such as uh, co um, uh, collagen and also uh, protein glycans that we will know uh, later how they are uh, involved in, uh, uh, in cancer formation and the creation of a tumor microenvironment. Now, what is the matricellular protein? It is uh, extracellular uh, matrix protein. It's involved in regulation of uh, cell signaling and also involved involve in formation of uh, uh, epithelial mesenchymal phenotype uh, that is highly motile cell can uh, escape through blood vessels to reach to the secondary sites where they can colonize and for, uh, uh, this will uh, do the uh, metastasis. Also, it, it's uh, included in a uh, signaling pathway that causes the overexpression of matrix metalloproteinase, which is a protein that's involved in the degradation of extracellular matrix through binding with type 4 collagen and called to degradation of, uh, cause to degradation of collagen and uh, do the disintegration of extracellular matrix. Uh, uh, these matricellular proteins are highly regulated in tissue mid-modulating, such as inflammation and tissue repair, and also it's highly regulated during the, the period development, but its expression level is restricted during adult stages. Uh, cancer cell secrete this microcellular protein that go to the surrounding and can create a soil. This soil is suitable for uh, tumor growth and metastasis. <clears throat> Here, uh, the first uh, protein we are interested in as uh, spark, which is secreted the protein acidic uh, rich in cytosine. Uh, this uh, protein uh, mainly it can be uh, extracellular secreted or inside the cell, which is called intracellular, and it can be in the lumen of endoplasmatic reticulum, and also it can be found in a nucleus. It consists of the three domains. The first one is acidic domain, which consists of glutamate and aspartate, and it's included in the antibody antigen interaction. The second domain is folistatin-like domain that's involved in tumor suppression effect of a spark. So we have to put in mind that the spark behave in two directions. 
it can be tumor activated and it can be tumor suppressor uh, through this domain because it suppress the active gene which is tumor growth factor beta and uh, also it causes the uh, uh, suppression of uh, vascular endothelial growth factor and inhibit angiogenesis. So it's important to know the function or how spark work or what them or what the mechanism that by which the spark work so we can develop later a strategy to target this protein. Uh, also, the last domain here that we have here, this calcium dependent domain that depends on the calcium concentration in the, in the uh, tumor microenvironment and can bind to different types of collagen, such as collagen type 1, type 3, and type 4, and type 5. And this uh, uh, domain, it goes uh, in the tumor microenvironment, it causes metastasis because also it uh, degrades the extracellular matrix or cause this inhibition. What is the rule of SPARC? In physiological condition, I said matricellular protein in general, uh, functional in the, um, the tumor, uh, in the tissue remodeling and also, also in the uh, development. But in cancer condition, these matricellular protein are highly expressed and there is there are many, uh, in, many in many literature uh, that um, confer this matricellular protein, especially SPARC, is highly upregulated, especially in a breast cancer, bone cancer, ovarian cancer, and uh, prostate cancer. And also, uh, it's, uh, 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 it can be downregulated, as I mentioned earlier, through this domain, the folistatin-like domain. It was found in one literature that uh, in study by uh, in 2010 that uh, this protein when down regulated is related to poor prognosis. This is the effect uh, or the function of a spark. Mainly, it causes that uh, this association or the adherence of cell and makes the cells separated by removing the cadherin that stuck cell with each other and also remove the integrin that stuck the cell on the extracellular matrix. So the cell convert from its epithelial type that is stabilized and stuck into the mesenchymal uh, type, which is um, uh, highly motile that can migrate through the bloodstream and do colonization. A spark also uh, caused the uh, disintegration of extracellular matrix and prevent angiogenesis. Another uh, uh, glycoprotein, which is uh, osteoponentin, which also can be secreted or, uh, or inside the cell, intracellular, in the lumen of uh, endoplasmatic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, or inside the nucleus. Also, its function in uh, bone remodeling and homeostasis, but in cancer condition, the condition is highly upregulated, especially in bone cancer and the breast cancer. And it was found that its expression level increased 10 times than normal tissue. And it supports the whole mark of cancer, which is six fold marks of cancer, cell proliferation, anti -apoptotic, uh, has anti-apoptotic property, and also cell motility and evade from immune, immune system. And also it's involved in tumor genesis and metastasis because when interact with it, its integrin receptor, it will trigger many uh, uh, tumor pathway or pathway that involve in a tumor such as phosphatidyl in the 3-phosphate kinase and AKT, uh, uh, ERK and MAP kinase that lead to increase in activation of some proteins such as UPA and matrix metalloproteinase, which involve also in cancer invasion. Here, the last pathway we are interested in, the ERK MAP kinase pathway is a highly regulated or well-regulated pathway, and it's involved, involved in uh, cell proliferation and uh, sorry, proliferation and differentiation. But when this pathway is mutated, it can be involved in cancer. This pathway starts with the uh, interaction between the effector, which is a receptor tyrosine kinase that trigger a, a complex with grip two and SOS. And then when this complex formed, SOS will activate the RAS to convert GDP into GTP. And now RAS signaling pathway will be triggered that started from RAF that has uh, um, kinase activity that phosphorylate MIC1 and 2 also has 
uh, kinase activity and ERK1 and ERK2 that, has, uh, that have also a kinase activity. When ERK is activated, it will move from the cytoplasmatic side into the nucleus to a trigger a can canonical pathway, which is a canonical pathway to uh, trigger a, a protein, except, uh, sorry, a gene expression and the protein of the production. But in our uh, thesis or our the project, we are interested in the, uh, uh, in the process that happen in the cytosol, in the cytoplasm, uh, uh, before being go to the uh, nucleus. But uh, these um, processes is not well understood yet. What the aim of our our uh, project, uh, our working pieces is that MAP kinase ERK1 and ERK2 signaling is involved in regulating of intracellular trafficking and secretion of the spark and osteoporotin. Also, to do that, we analyze the transport of endogenous spark and osteoporotin by using immunofluorescence, uh, by using like a microscope, and also with the last system. And we use Western blotting uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, measurement or uh, to do the um, evaluate the protein expression level uh, of the these proteins. Uh, we use two uh, different ways to inhibit uh, spark and osteoporotin by using short term inhibitor U0126 and this IRNA not down. I will I will not speak in details on my methodology, but any uh, question uh, you are very welcome. We, uh, we use tissue culture uh, in DMEM medium. Then we uh, use a short-term inhibitor for one hour to uh, see the effect of this inhibitor of F1 and F2 on the trafficking or, or the uh, secretion of this protein, osteoponentin and the spark. And also we use a transfiction uh, by knocking down uh, ERK1 or ERK2 separately, not with each other, uh, to see what their effect on the, this uh, protein. We studied the uh, images under uh, uh, light, uh, light microscope, and we use, as I mentioned earlier, Western blood to see the expression level of protein. Here, the result on the uh, discussion here. Uh, we have Western blood and we uh, express the bands. Okay, we hear the inhibition, uh, sorry, the inhibitor result, the first one. Uh, we apply the inhibitor on the rust cell for one hour and we saw that uh, the inhibition of phosphorylation of proteins, ERK1 and ERK2, by disappearance of this band. Now we studied the, we studied the images under a microscope and we saw that between control and treated, there is differences in localization of osteoponentin. We found that osteoponentin is localized or clustered in perinuclear region before treatment in control, whereas it's evenly distributed in, uh, um, after a treatment. Uh, from research, we know that uh, osteoponentin has uh, any protein when go to all the Golgi apparatus, it's either go to uh, post translational modifications such as glycosylation, sulfation, and phosphorylation. This will increase the molecular weight of a protein to be uh, uh, trapped or uh, uh, to be trapped inside Golgi, okay, or in the, the perinuclear region. And this result, in line with our result that we can see here, the osteoponentin is a trapped before the treatment in perinuclear region or in uh, Golgi apparatus region. And this trapping decrease after inhibition, after inhibition. Also, we know that osteoponentin can be found in many isoforms. It can be outside the cell and uh, secreted or it can be inside the cell intracellular. From the literature, we know that osteoponentin, which is inside the cell can be found in the perinuclear region and also in the, uh, per, uh, in the Golgi apparatus. And also it can be found in the perimembrane. And it was found that osteoponentin can bind with actin cytoskeleton, uh, uh, and this will help in, in the macrophages and osteo, uh, osteoblast cell line. And this help in the separation and spreading of this cell. Also the phosphorylation process, of any protein will help uh, to um, um, release, efficient release of the cargo. 
uh, we know that uh, kinases is very important in the efficient release of the cargo from vessels. Vessels usually like this, and it is covered with cop. And cop contains specific protein. Uh, from literature, I, uh, I have read that uh, some kinase such as HR are at 25P, it phosphorylates specific uh, protein on the on this cup, on this cup, and this phosphorylation process it's help in efficient release of the cargo in this phase of Golgi. Guess if there is any blocker or inhibitor that inhibit this protein, the HRR 25P, from doing the phosphorylation process, so the cargo will not release efficiently. It was found in real literature also, ERG1 and ERG2 are both kinases, and all, both these kinases, if they, they, they work in the similar mechanism of the protein kinase I spoke now about. So if we block ERG1 or ERG2 or inhibit them from being worked or doing their phosphorylation, they will affect the vesicles from being fused and release its cargo, its cargo of a protein such as osteoponitin, and a spark. We counted the cell that contains this clustered localization of osteoponitin before and after treatment. And we found that control cell has more, uh, 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 more even, uh, uh, sorry, uh, cluster uh, dis distribution than uh, uh, after, inhib uh, uh, after inhibition used. And also we uh, compare the cell between the control and the inhibitor that contains the even distribution uh, localization of osteoponitin. And we found in control, we have less cell with even distribution than uh, after using the inhibitor. We studied also the localization, the effect of the inhibitor, the short-term inhibitor, one hour on spark localization. We found both cells before treatment and after, after treatment express the protein. However, some cells in the control express the protein more. And after the treatment, what we found, we found that the cells express the protein in varying way. And it is different in their, uh, 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 the, the distribution of the spark is different from uh, osteoponitin. It's important to know how a spark is work because a spark involved in uh, a normal biological condition and also involved in cancer. And the spark is a protein. And there is, uh, and it is, uh, this protein is engulfed or uh, absorbed or um, endocytosis by the receptor called the stabilin one. Once the spark is absorbed inside the cell, especially in um, um, activated, constitutively activated uh, macrophages, it will undergo the degradation. Also, it was found from literature that the spark is a chaperone, that when secreted from the cell or cancer cell, it go directly to the extracellular matrix, hold type one collagen or bind it and cause the degradation of this collagen. And uh, from uh, this result, we can conclude that spark play a uh, role as a scavenger chaperone that can shuttle between inside the cell into the extracellular matrix and on the opposite side. We assess the protein expression level uh, against, and we do normalization against GAP-DH, which is a standard protein. And we compare the protein before treatment and after treatment, we didn't find any change in the protein expression level. What we can conclude from this study or this experiment, we conclude that the effect that we saw in uh, uh, using an immunofluorescence fluorescence images, that inhibitor uh, effect on ERK1 and ERK2 affect the trafficking and secretion pathway of the spark and osteoponitin, but doesn't affect the uh, protein level of this uh, matricellular uh, protein. Now the second experiment, which is the transfiction, we use a long-term inhibition uh, knockdown here, we use the non-coding control uh, to, um, uh, to, as a control, non-coding siRNA as a control, and we use siRNA against ERK1. Here, we knock down ERK1, 
And here we knock down egg two. And it appeared by this appearance of the band itself. And we did that separately, okay? Erg one alone, knock down. Erg two alone, knock down. We didn't knock down them with each other. So we got a high efficient of knockdown. Here, what we can see from uh, the um, graph here, uh, ERK1 protein reduced um, significantly by 72%, and ERK2 reduced significantly by 76%. Then we studied the images after knockdown experiment. What happened with osteoponotin localization? We see here, before treatment, uh, osteoponotin localization or trafficking is evenly distributed throughout, throughout the cytoplasm. Whereas in the application or, or uh, uh, after ERK1 uh, knockdown, we saw that a protein localized in perinuclear region. Similar result we saw with ERK2. We know that ERK1 and ERK2, both the protein has interchangeable relationship and they have redundancy between each other. And also, uh, the activity of each protein reflects the uh, protein expression level. When one protein is silenced, the other protein is activated. That means when ERK1 is silenced or knocked down, ERK2 will be activated or phosphorylated. When ERK2 and vice versa, when ERK2 is knocked down, ERK1 will be activated. And we found from literature that ERK1 and ERK2 can compete on the similar substrate. In literature also, we found that there is 284 substrate for ERK1, ERK2, sorry, can ERK1 interact with. So it doesn't matter if we knock ERK1 or we knock ERK2 because we will get the similar result and this uh, information in line with our result here. So we got the same result if we knock ERK1 or we knock down ERK2. Also, we count the cell that is evenly distributed and the clustered osteoponotin. We found that in control, we have around uh, a 12 percent uh, clustered cell, whereas in ERK, this percent increased to 30 percent and th uh, 35 percent for ERK1 and ERK2, respectively. After calculation and counting the proportion of cell that contain even distribution of osteoponotin, we found the control is around 88%. And this ratio, uh, percentage decreased significantly to 24 and 12 um, and 11 after uh, the knockdown for ERK1 and ERK2 significantly. We did the protein expression level to see the effect of knockdown on the expression level of a protein by using Western blood. We didn't found, find anything affect a spark, so the protein expression level is, uh, doesn't significantly change. Whereas we, can, we found that osteoponotin, after long term application or a long term knockdown of ERK1 and ERK2, the bands disappear here. This initial result need to uh, um, a more experiment to confirm. But we, uh, from reading the literature, we can guess or we can uh, uh, think about that uh, this protein osteoponotin, I told you, it consists of many isoform. And sometimes the low molecular weight protein can be trapped in Golgi, not secreted. So the band disappear here. But this need more study. Conclusion. From literature, we know that matricellular protein spark and osteoponotin involve in cancer tumor, tumor genesis and metastasis. And this attracts many researchers to find a way how I, we can reduce the protein level or the expression level of this protein. But in our findings, we concentrate in using short term inhibition and knock down uh, methods to affect the secretion of this protein, not affect the protein level uh, of uh, itself. What we add, uh, um, this, uh, our work, what, what we add uh, in the knowledge, what we add uh, to uh, the uh, literature, what we add more information about matricellular protein. Uh, 
We reach to, or we arrive to a new knowledge of how ERP1 and ERP2 affect the release of matricellular protein from osteoblast and how cancer cells send signaling via MAP kinase pathway that affects or enhance the secretion of a spark and osteoponectin, which may directly influence the tumor metastasis. This will help us to think in a future world so we can track this protein in, uh, micro, uh, in tumor microenvironment by using nanoparticles that uh, can target this protein and prevent them from being secreted. This is my references. Thank you for your attendance and listening. And any questions are welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. Well, very good, Ryan. So is anyone has questions for Ryan? If not, I, can I ask you something? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think the effect after the inhibition on the distribution is pretty striking. Yeah. If you try to inhibit both, it is you get something more uh, to do the double yeah. knockdown. The, uh, this we can uh, think in the future to do not down both of the protein. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's very strong. Yeah. Really. Yeah. The change in localization. Yeah. And you have an idea? Maybe you said I, I didn't get it of the possible mechanism. Why uh, do you think they change? Uh, in secretion. Uh, yeah, mainly the, the information is not uh, a lot in literature. We can uh, we we compare. If you notice, we compare the information with other proteins. Uh, but mainly we concentrate on the vesicle. Yeah. You know, the transport, the vesicle, how the, uh, the protein also undergo the post-translation modification. Maybe in this, uh, in this way, we will have to focus more and mm -hmm. uh, study more. Yeah. Thank you. You are very welcome. Yeah. yeah I may have missed it, so apologies if I did. But nice talk, by the way. I'm, sure I'm very impressed. Um, Thank you. You talk about secretion. Yes. Did you actually measure, and this is what I, I may have missed, did you actually measure the osteopontin in the culture media? Uh, we measured the expression by using uh, uh, Western blood. But from the media or from the cells? Uh, no, we just only calculate the cell using uh, using MHJ J <laughs> program. Yeah, that's it. We didn't measure anything from the plate directly. Yeah, but, but what did you put on the Western blood? And Western blood, uh, the you know uh, the we use the phosphor uh, for the inhibitor. We did both for the inhibitor and uh, for uh, the SI uh, RNA. Yeah. Uh, we use uh, the um, the mechanism. Uh, we use the antibody and antigen for uh, what, what was in the sample. In the sample. Yeah. So not 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 what the antibodies were. What did you load on the gel? On the gel, just only the antigen that <laughs> the sample. And the question no, is because whether this was the extract from cells. Yeah, yeah, it was extracted from cells. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, sure. But not, not the media. No, no, no. Yeah. Just only that the cells. Curious. That would be interesting. Though, uh, because we, when we, when we, uh, when we seeded the cell, we seeded, seeded them on um, on um, on cover slips. Mm -hmm. So uh, and also on the plastic mm -hmm. uh, in a well. So we uh, we aspirate uh, the media and we wash them many times. And after that, we took uh, the the. The extraction as uh, Dr. Makarov mentioned. Yeah. Uh, can I say something? It would be nice to see the media. Yeah, uh, Dr. Can I say something? So um, we we tried to the supernate, but it uh, wasn't so successful. Not with Riam, but we tried it before. So, um, but, uh, would, <laughs> but uh, we didn't share that with you at the moment. Um, and we also did do a radioactive labeling. So to measure not specifically the osteopontin, but uh, the general protein secretion. <laughs> so Goodman said they tried previously on uh, the supernatants, ah, okay. but it wasn't that successful and they'd also tried radioactive labeling. Oh, I see. But I see. But she hadn't shared that information with the uh, really Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Any more questions? No? No? Well, if not, thank you again, yeah, thank you. Ryan, and really appreciate yeah. that you volunteered and you did very well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, put your things down.
because you know you're not doing that for nothing, right? Okay. So you have a certificate that you have presented, and you can add in your CV. Thank right? you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. So your friends are missing out. <laughs> Absolutely. There's not a, they are not a certificate for the supervisor, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay well um since nobody else appeared to present <laughs> i think we are finished with the presentation but they're going to bring food at four o'clock here so it's better that you know we we'll call somebody <laughs> to come back by four o'clock right because there's no way we can eat all this food <laughs> Huh? Well, bring Rona here, right? <laughs> Have the food. <laughs> okay, so you've seen what is going to happen. You've seen what is going to happen, right? Yeah, and you as well. Well done. Thank you. Okay, so we can close. Can we close it? Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you very much. It's the smallest uh, conference <laughs> ever attended, but it will grow. It will grow. And the pressure is on you guys now next year. There's no pressure, no marking. No, I'm extended to do it. Not, yeah. Uh, not <laughs> yeah. And let's thank the organizer. <laughs> no, I didn't cook it, so you're safe. Uh, oh. <laughs> if we want to access the, uh, the recording, how we can access? Uh, I think, um, good question. I think uh, maybe I stop the recording now, right? I cannot send the food via Zoom. Sorry. Stop. Stop.